we've had a massive 7.4 magnitude earthquake and strong aftershock strike Mexico today. A tsunami warning has been issued. This is an area, of course, on the Ring of Fire, an area with quite a few volcanoes as well. Let's take a look at the maps. First of all, I want to show you that uh, this is in the area of the erupting Popocatapetl volcano. And uh, this is the area right here. We have about 46 volcanoes in uh, western central Mexico, six volcanoes in southern Mexico and Baja California, New, uh, Mexico, Mexico Islands. This whole area is uh, all these Mexicos, uh, these uh, volcanoes you can see. This is the area of our uh, era, the 7.4 and aftershocks and foreshocks, of course. And this is the area of uh, Kalima is up there, Popocatapetl is around there. So uh, Kalima is not erupting, but Popo, Mount Popo is erupting. And it's uh, four out of five. And we're looking at the eruption first, and then we'll go into the details of the earthquake. Popocatapetl is one of Mexico's most active volcanoes. After almost 50 years of dormancy, Popo came back to life in 1994 and has been has since then been producing powerful explosions at irregular intervals in the past century before European invasions. Large eruption produced giant mud flows that have buried Aztec settlements and even entire pyramids. Volcan Popocatepetl, whose name in Aztec word for smoking mountain, towers 5,426 meters. It's uh, 70 kilometers southeast of Mexico City to form North America's second highest volcano. Its, gase, its glacier clad stratovolcano contains a steep wall, a generally symmetrical volcano modified by the sharp peaked Ventorillo, a remnant of the earlier volcano. So uh, that's what it looks like right here. Mount, Mount Popo pictures. That's a beautiful picture of it right there. That's what it looks like. But let's, back, let's go back to our map. And uh, this is the area. Of, of the volcanoes that we had today, the sorry, the earthquake at 7.4 magnitude, 26 kilometers depth, and after that, about um, an hour after that, we had the aftershock of 4.6. Um, let's go to the shake map of it. As you can see, most of the country, if you extrapolate the uh, intensity of the shake map, most of Mexico and parts of Guatemala have also felt that earthquake. And the tsunami warning, this is the U.S. US tsunami warning, the tsunami threat. And uh, this is the area of it, the, the threat location. And the they estimate about uh, one foot to three feet of uh, difference in the wave heights. That's it. Now, there are those who have claimed that it's a 7.7 .7 earthquake. Uh, USGS has it at 7.4. Most of them have, have, have it at 7.7. .7. West Coast information, American Samoa information, and uh, non-US, Canadian Pacific. Okay. Uh, tsunami threat, Hawaii information. Okay. This is where they, they clocked in that earthquake. So it's about one to three feet height of tsunami. And this is our map of it showing it's basically next to the fault line, the subduction zone of that area. This is the aftershock. And let's go and talk about what's going on there. This is our map of it right there. It's a top three of the large tectonic plates. Mexico is one of the largest, world's largest seismically active regions. The relative motion of these crustal plates causes frequent earthquakes and occasional volcanic eruptions. Most of the Mexican landmass is on the westward moving North American plate, the Pacific plate, ocean floor, south of Mexico being carried northeast by the underlying Cocos plate because oceanic crust is relatively dense. When the Pacific ocean floor encounters the lighter continental crust of the Mexican landmass, the ocean floor is subducted under the North American plate, creating the deep middle American trench along Mexico's uh, southern coast, and as a result of this convergence, the westward moving Mexico mass going this way is slowed and crumpled, 
creating the mountain ranges of southern Mexico and earthquakes near Mexico's southern coast, as we have now. As the oceanic crust is pulled downwards, it melts the molten materials and forced upward to weaknesses in the overlying continental crust. This process has created a region of volcanoes, and that's where we have Popo, uh, Mount Popo erupting. Volcanoes across south-central Mexico, known as the Cordilleras Noe Volcanica, and the area west of the Gulf of California, including Baja, um, where are we? Baja, California, moving northwest with the Pacific Plate, about 50 millimeters per year. Here, the Pacific and North American plates grind past each other, creating slight strike slip faulting, the southern extension of California San Andreas Fault. In the past, this relative plate motion pulled Baja, California, away from the coast, forming the Gulf of California, and is the cause of earthquakes of the Gulf of California region today. And there's Baja right there. And this is the area of where our mantle plume, as we speak about many times, as a mantle plume coming from there, going into a Y shape. Uh, the western part goes under San Andreas Fault and Walker Lane Fault System, and the uh, eastern part goes along the fault line through this area through Utah and up into Yellowstone and into uh, Idaho, that imaginary seven. Okay, so that's the mantle plume coming from Baja California. So, uh, as we know, this whole thing is a subduction zone right here. And going back to this, Mexico has a long history of destructive earthquakes and volcanic eruptions. In September 1985, a magnitude 8 earthquake in Mexico City, southern Mexico, volcan Colima Volcano, erupted 2005 and, 2000 and 1982. Uh, Paricutin Volcano, west of Mexico City, uh, Popocatapetl and uh, Ixta Cihualt Volcano, Smoking Mountains and White Lady. Southeast of Mexico, occasionally vent gas and can be clearly seen from the city. Okay, well, we know Mount Popo renews activity, forcing evacuation by towns, causing seismologists and government officials to become concerned about the effect and large scale eruption might have on heavily populated area. Mount Popo last erupted in 2010. Well, no, it's erupting now, as we can see. Mount Popo is erupting now. It's 4 out of 5. It's erupting. Oh, do we have web, live webcams? Let's see. Okay, there's one of the pictures, the latest picture of uh, the Mount Popo webcams. Okay, more there. There we go. That's what it looks like. So this is an area that is very active, and Mount Popo is erupting. And we'll see what else is coming after this, because we have to be very careful. This is an area of extremely... Well, that's a huge volcano. Others, we said before, others have clocked it in at 7.7. .7. USGS has it at a, at a 7.4. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on, not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.